Okay, just laid the baby down for a nap, so now I have some time to take some photos of my leg warmers. I was so excited when I met my bride because I had been waiting for a long time and she was literally everything that I had been looking for and everything that I had been waiting for. We always wanted to have a family. I know I always wanted to be a mom and I knew that Rick would always make a great dad and I guess you really don't understand until you begin that process that it doesn't necessarily come easily um, for people and for us it didn't. I think I was naive when it came to the thought of growing a family. It was much more difficult, much more challenging. We struggled um, for over a year to start a family through a lot of ups and downs and different trials and um, and a really early on loss and miscarriage that really rocked us. And um, when we got pregnant again, um, a few months after that, I was scared that it would end in miscarriage again. I hadn't had a successful pregnancy. And After the miscarriage, um, we rebounded fairly quickly. And for whatever reason, when we got pregnant again, uh, which ended up being Hallie, I thought, this is it. Once we got past those early stages and those real, you know, crucial stages in a pregnancy, um, I mean, my pregnancy was great. I didn't have mm -hmm. any morning sickness, totally smooth. I mean, it really was like, this is it. Like, you know, we're, we're past the high risk stage of, you know, or the risky stages in pregnancy. And um, then really did not have a doubt after that. I loved, I loved it. I loved being pregnant. We'd heard and read about and had talked to many people that said, you know, once you get past that, uh, the risk of something happening drops tremendously. So it was a breath of fresh air for us. We felt like we've made it, we've gotten through it. Melissa's doing fantastic, happy as can be, optimistic, full of hope. Yeah, we thought, well, I guess, we thought everything was gonna be smooth sailing once Hallie came along. And seemingly it did go mm -hmm. very smooth um, for quite a while through the pregnancy. I was headed to on my way to work one day and had a doctor's visit and you know just a routine checkup and I do remember that there was the it was a different nurse and that she had said that my doctor was in um, that, that my doctor was in a delivery and so that she was going to do my appointment and I hadn't had that nurse before um, and she went through the regular checks of the appointment and um, she said something isn't right and I need to get your doctor um, and I was like what I, something's not right and she left the room really quickly and that was like Wait, what's not what's not right why would something not be right my doctor came in and um, right away whatever that nurse told her she was very concerned I just remember the look on her face and the words out of her mouth were, you're going to have some hard decisions to make. Hard decisions about, about uh, my pregnancy, about this baby that's growing inside of me. Like, I just was like, you must have the wrong person or you must have, like, you've got to be kidding me. And the next words she said were, Melissa, you're going to deliver this baby within 24 hours and it's not going to survive. Those words were so earth shattering because 10 minutes ago, I was having a completely normal pregnancy. That I could go from being so normal to get in this hospital gown, we're wheeling you into surgery right now. Uh, to get a call that something's really wrong, I was pretty shaken. I was pretty scared because I didn't know if Melissa was okay. I didn't know if her baby girl was okay. I didn't know anything. I, I just knew that something pretty devastating had happened. 
I remember as I went into the hospital and I met her doctor right away. She came out right as I was coming in and she told me everything went great. Uh, Melissa's doing good. The baby is, is okay, but she's going to be in the hospital for the next four to five months. I think that should have probably been, oh my gosh, five months, what am I going to do? But we knew the situation was so grave that I would do anything. I would do, I would lay on my back for five months, which is as they said I was going to do to save this baby. Coming out of recovery from the surgery and seeing Rick for the first time, and um, all I really remember at that point is the doctor did what she could, and the surgery was successful. And really, like we got this, like we we got this now. We didn't see it as for us, this is a bad deal, we've got a bad rap. We just saw it as, this is part of it, and we're gonna make the best of it. You know, I'm here laying confined to this bed in the hospital, and I always wanted to make my daughter a blanket, and I was like, what better place to do it now that I'm trapped here on this bed? That was really when kind of a change happened in my mind. Um, instead of really wasting the hours away or sleeping the hours away, I actually had a project to do and to accomplish, and it was for her. I mean, really, right there in that bed is where my love for knits grew. I felt good. I, you know, for as much as you can, laying in a hospital bed and eating hospital food. Um, but there was that night after being in the hospital for a couple of weeks that. Uh, the nurses changed staff and my night nurse came in and asked if I needed anything and I grabbed my book like I always did to read a chapter before bed and um, suddenly I felt my water break and I just knew. I knew what it was. That morning when the doctor got in at six, they, um, she came and did an ultrasound and um, she was actually still positive. Like, I don't, I don't know, I'm not totally convinced your water's broken, your contractions haven't picked up, your, all the signs are pretty stable and normal, and I'm not, I'm not convinced. It looks like there's still good pockets of water in here, and the baby's doing great, the heart rate was fine. Um, and literally, as she finished the ultrasound, and was leaving, I remember the contractions really like suddenly picked up. And I remember looking at the doctor and her kind of, you know, coming down to my level and just saying that she was sorry that <laughs> there was nothing else that they could do. And I asked her, like, you know, is the baby going to be born alive or am I going to see her stop breathing? And that was the hardest thing for me was to know that Hallie was perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with her. Her heart rate through the whole thing was normal. She was completely normal, that it was my body that couldn't keep her in. I struggled with that for a really long time, knowing how perfect and normal she was, but it was my fault. It wasn't your fault. It was my body that couldn't couldn't sustain her pregnancy. We'd been fighting for this baby girl and praying, and we gave it everything that we had. We had so many people praying with us, stand, <laughs> standing with us, and we never wavered for one second. We had full faith that everything would be 
just fine. This is gonna be a miracle baby. This is gonna be a testimony. This is gonna be a story of perseverance that ended well. Mm -hmm. And when I saw our doctor's face, I knew it wasn't gonna be that story. And from there they wheeled, wheeled me from triage back into labor and delivery. And they just said, you, you know, your, your body will just continue and we'll deliver her. And it did. Yeah, from the time that we really knew how I would be born. Uh, it was about a 54 hour period, just excruciating. You know, just as quickly as it happened, she went home. I don't know that there is a greater pain, to be quite honest. As believers in Jesus Christ, who had faith, who didn't waver, who gave it all that we had, no matter how difficult it is, we're gonna take the stance of trust. Through the pain, and maybe not even figuring out why this happened. I said, I'm okay with that, but we're gonna trust in God. One thing they, the doctors or the, the hospital staff that are involved in kind of the grieving process and what happens after a loss like this is they said, um, you know, you're gonna have to find your new normal, but to help you find that, continue something in memory of her and doing something in memory of her. And, you know, one of the, that, thing for me was really, really, I had picked up my love again for creating and for um, sewing and making that quilt and those blankets. And um, and that was something I continued after losing her. Now that I'm not on bed rest anymore and I was working on my sewing machine and I was determined that this quilt that I had started for her, for Hallie in the hospital, that I was going to finish. And I found a lot of healing through that, a lot of working with my hands and creating with my hands and just knowing like she's not here anymore. I mean, the amount of tears that I, you know, shed on that yarn and on that fabric um, was the Lord just really working through that process and that grieving process for me. And we're still grieving. I mean, there's, there's still days where we miss her. Um, good news is we'll see her again and that's very encouraging um it was very quickly within four months of losing her that um i found out i was pregnant again we certainly weren't ready for it we weren't planning for it mm -hmm. I was excited for the hope again, but, but scared. Mm -hmm. For me, at least, I had some confidence of whatever the case happens, I think we're in good hands. That was how I felt about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, we had the same high-risk doctor that we had felt so connected with, with Hallie's loss. I mean, they told me I would have weekly visits, I'd have weekly shots, I'd be on a list of medication that I would need, I would have weekly ultrasounds. That was 21 weeks or 22 weeks along with Sienna. And uh, we got the news at a doctor's visit that things were looking not great, like how they started to with Hallie and that I needed to immediately go on strict med rest. And again, I was willing to do anything. Luckily with this one, they allowed me to be at home on bed rest on the couch. And um, I was making baby clothes, baby headbands, blankets. I followed every doctor's order, drinking mm -hmm. a gallon of water a day, only getting up to go to the bathroom. I laid there on our couch for four months, uh, weekly doctor's visits, weekly appointments, um, weekly checks, and still continued to create and to um, sew. And um, we had her, happy, healthy, great delivery pregnancy actually on her due date. Um, blew all the doctor's minds away. After I had her, um, yeah, I just kind of continued like this. I, I really was this do-it-yourself type of mentality, creating, making things while baby napped. Um, I had an, an idea, an inspiration that I wanted to make a pair of boot socks that stuck out of the top of my boots that had a little bit of lace on them. 
when Melissa made it and uh, told me how much of a pain it was to make that she would never ever make one again. And we chuckle about that because I was in full support. I wanted to wear them. They took mm -hmm. me forever to make that I, you know, I might as well wear them wherever I go because <laughs> they took me so long. Then I get my wear out of them. And everywhere I went, people would stop and ask me where I got them. And I'd tell them I'd make them. And these strangers would be like, can you make a pair for me? And they'd hand me a scrap piece of paper with their phone number and email on it. I'd, I'd buy a pair from you. I'd, before I knew it, I just had this like pile of random scraps of paper in my purse of people who wanted these socks. Cards. Yeah, and Rick said, wow, it seems like you're getting a lot of interest with these. Why don't you put them up online and see if they'd sell? And I had started a little, um, a little shop, online shop of just all the little baby things I was making. And so I put up this pair of boot socks with lace on the top and they sold instantly. Um, I was kind of shocked. And then all of a sudden I looked back and my email was just full hundreds of purchase requests for this pair. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this really happening? Do I take these offline? I don't have these. I don't have the materials to make all these. Within 48 hours, we had over 400 purchase requests. Not only requests, but people that had already paid for this product. And literally, we had a business start that we didn't even know was a business. We knew nothing about the industry. We knew nothing about women's apparel. We knew nothing about shipping, logistics, any of that. Operations for the manufacturing or it was just complete pandemonium. And Melissa started coming out with some different ideas and some scarves. and. She had different inspirations for boot socks, and then she had inspirations for boot cuffs, and she started creating this category, and I'm watching my incredible wife totally come alive because she's having a blast with it. Between all of the social media and Melissa creating something from her heart that people really liked, I did know that we had a business on our hands. Our first complete year of business in 2012, we had done over a million dollars of business. It was the wildest thing that you've ever seen. That is not normal by any stretch. And healthy company, we were learning, we were figuring it out. Uh, and in 2012, I had a gut feeling that we needed to be on Shark Tank. And I told Melissa about it. And I applied a handful of times between February 2012 to May 2012. And I didn't hear a word. And then the fateful day came where I had a phone call with a really good friend of mine that was considering helping us with the business, possibly partnering with us. And he told me, I really feel like you're supposed to be on Shark Tank. And so I laughed because I hadn't told him a thing about it. And he just said, I've been praying for you guys and I feel like that's the route. And I said, that's exactly what is on my heart. We did go to LA, we filmed. Things went perfectly, couldn't have gone any better from a business perspective. We got the exact partner that we wanted in Barbara Corcoran, and things were off and running at that point. So now we're only five years into the company. Uh, Melissa has a design team around her. We've got the most incredible staff you have ever seen on the planet with talented people that are go-getters, that are hard chargers that also have fun together. And we're really just scratching the surface. When we lost Hallie, we were trusting that something good would come out of this. I didn't expect to see it or know what it was, but I wanted to know that I would get to heaven and see her and that I would hear what the impact her life and her very short life had on others. And I just think it's so neat that the Lord had this story unfold for us that took such a tragedy, that took such a painful experience in our lives and now turned it into a booming, exploding business. One that, I mean, now we've been able to build orphanages in India. We've been able to take the orphans off the street and give them a place uh, to call home, give them food and fresh water and water. Um, pulling girls that are being sex trafficked at the border of Nepal out and giving them skilled trade um, so they can re-enter society empowered. And we really have been able to take this painful experience and see, and actually see the good that has come out of it. And 
it's still unfolding. I think the story has many more chapters to go.